All right, folks, welcome back. If I can figure out how to open the hood. Uh, we got the 2019. It's the Subaru, the Forester, the big 2.5. We need to give it a brake inspection. Put that back on for the fella. Uh, 70 some thousand miles on this little guy, I guess. And he's not happy with the braking effort or the amount of effort applied versus the amount of braking gained, I guess. I took it for a drive. It does have a bit of a spongy pedal, nothing crazy. If you climb on the brakes heavy, they do have a bit of a shimmy. Uh, apparently this car's never had front brakes and it's had one set of rear. So we're gonna pick it up, have a look at it, see what it needs for brakes and uh, see if we can get some stuff today. At least that's part of the plan anyhow. bad for 70 some thousand because it looks like probably quarter pad left or still we'll to pull the wheels to have a little gander and evidently these aren't super old in the back I said that we did them so they got to be good right Let's have a look at these little fellas. Caliper seems to push in there. Pants are just about shot, probably 10% left. Let me grab a screwdriver here. That's really not too bad for it. 70 some thousand stuck in the bracket a little bit here not completely wasted but getting down there pretty good like I said the effort was a little bit high for the amount of stopping power he had but yeah he might have had another you know five or ten thousand miles left in those pads seemed to be worn pretty even a bit of a rust ridge there pins aren't seized up let's pop off the other side Yeah, about the same thing on this side. Not completely spent, but just getting down there pretty good. That one really wasn't too terribly stuck. But you can see that there. About the same. Sweet. pad here on the rear it's kind of looking through the caliper here I would say a little better than 50% anyhow probably closer to 65% or so pad left there I'm just gonna have a look at the inside of the rotors make sure they're you know nice and clean like the outside here I'll have to look I think you said it was about a year ago we did those it definitely looks uh, like some even wear these this style pad and bracket on these Subarus they are similar to the like older Chrysler's no you know no brake hardware or anything they don't have a tendency to seize up in the bracket so it's a pretty good brake design for the rust belt well that was easy I called the fella let him know where he's at with everything he said just do it he said if it's close do it if they're less than half do them okay so before we push the pistons in I'm gonna go in with the wheezy wheel cleaning uppy tool <laughs> if you guys remember that Thank <laughs> you. 
I just like to use that to knock off some of the big chunks of rust. Before we go in with just your standard, you know, 36 grit cookie wheel. I get some of the big chunks off and we, just, we can get in here flat before we push them in. That looks pretty good. See what the face, always look inside the caliper, you know where the pad sits, make sure there's not a lot of rust and junk on that. This one's not too bad. So now that we have, you know, the big chunks cleaned off, it's a lot easier to do before you push the pistons in. We're gonna take and push them in. You can use a couple, you know, channel locks or two pairs of C-clamp vice grips or a little caliper pushy tool. There's a little bit of air in the boots. Sometimes you can just pick them up with your fingers here on the edge, but these ones are holding the air, so we'll just come in it or come at it with a bent screwdriver. Keep it pointed towards your piston. We're going to work it right under that lip of the boot where it hooks onto the piston. You kind of push it back, you can see it. Get down in the crack and what I call burp the baby. Just pick it up and let the air out. Of course, that one did not work. Let's see if I can find that lip again underneath it pick it up there it goes and then you'll see the the boot suck in you don't have to but the, the chance of pinching your boot in the pad increases if you leave it like this let me show you see how see how this boot you know folds back on itself like that and this one's still puffy if you put it on your caliper bracket and you accidentally you know bend the boot over and it gets pinched between the caliper and the pad and you don't see it you know let's say it goes like that as that piston comes out it'll it'll rip the boot so like I said I just come at it like this just kind of push it back you'll see where the the boot hooks onto the piston here just wiggle down in that groove pick it up a little bit and you'll see you'll see it suck right in there and then you can just let it down so that's that that's all prepped you can see where the rust on the rotor was hitting the caliper here got a few shiny spots so now I'll just come in here with a stiff wire brush knock some of the big junk off hit it with a blow nozzle and that'll be it you'll get about one in the northeast you'll get about one brake job out of a set of calipers on a Subaru because what will happen is these pistons will rust through and then they'll start leaking brake fluid they're pretty thick I mean as you can see but you can see the amount of really heavy scale that builds up inside of them so eventually these actually rust straight straight through I think that'll be good. I'm gonna grab a 19 swiveler. We'll pop the bracket off. Grab a leash because it's time to bring out the dog. <laughs> bring out this nasty. Hasn't made an appearance in a while. Show you how the dog does it. A little bit of an overkill, but hey. There's that, so we'll take the rotor off. <laughs> then we'll take it, peel the hardware off. I'm gonna go stick it in the sandblaster like we always do. We're gonna clean out where the pad ears sit and where the hardware sits, get rid of that rust and junk. Then we'll come back, we'll check our pins, make sure they're lubed up. Be ready to roll. These are 3M stud cleaner not a stud cleaner it goes around the stud allows us to clean in that portion of the hub or at least some of it anyways wish someone would start making these of various diameters because it works on some but not all it always fits around the stud even up to i don't know what are these 14 millimeters or 12 millimeter you can go up to 14s with that, it looks like maybe a 14 millimeter hole, but I wish the outside diameter of the disc was bigger because more often than not, it doesn't come all the way, you know, to the bottom of the hub or the inside. I 
On this car, it's not a big deal because there's not a large amount of rust, but on some cars where this is quite rusty in here, it can be a pain to get the rust out. A, a typical wire brush usually doesn't do anything to rust other than just polish it. In this case, it's taking us down to bare metal because this was just a little bit of surface rust because the car is only a few years old. But a few years in New York is like a lot of years in other places. All right, so I think everything's prepped and ready on this side. We just gotta wait for parts now. Well, waiting for Napa, we'll pull these out and have a look. The grease on them still looks really good. I can't really justify adding any more. I just like checking them anyways. You have to be really careful adding grease to the ones that have the rubber guide pin on them because it'll act like a little hydraulic cylinder. This will actually seal really well if you got a lot of grease on the backside. And as it heats up, it pushes that out like a hydraulic cylinder. I've actually seen it on a few instances where it'll fry the front outer brake pad right clean off the car. So be cautious if you're adding, you know, a ton of silicone grease uh, to the pins. Um, if they're nice and lubed and, you know, no real reason to add any more, don't. Good news and bad news, folks. The good news is we have brake parts here. The bad news is Napa screwed us again on our parts. So we had to pull out an emergency, had to send Mrs. O on a little over an hour drive each way to the Subaru dealer to pick up some OEM parts because A, we're ding-dongs, we tore the vehicle apart because we trusted that Napa was actually bringing us our parts. But they dropped the ball big time. I don't know, the guy had a whole bunch of excuses. Whatever. I do like the OEM parts on these. However, I quoted the fella on aftermarket. You know, the I was going to use the Napa CR, the coated rotors, and the adaptive one pad, so they're top shelf brakes. So the other bad news is I'm not making a dime on the brake job because I have to honor my price to them. It's not the customer's fault that Napa screwed up my fault for taking the car apart before I had to stuff in hand is what it is so we're putting now with the factory brakes if you're buying OEM brakes for it you have to buy the pads and a shim kit so don't forget to buy the shim kit and it does come with a molly coat grease that they they send with it it looks like uh, never sees it's a gold colored grease for grease in the inside of the uh, shim here. I'm just using our ceramic lube that we use on everything else, the Silurac CRC. I see it's a rubber coated shim anyways. So there's that, there's all the shims. Let's get our brackets. We'll get our brackets lubed up. We'll put our new hardware on those. Of course, these have already been sandblasted. I think we already discussed that. And we're a little under the gun because this fella's supposed to be here in not too long of a time to pick the car up because <laughs> I thought we had plenty of time. It's kind of like reality TV. Except if we don't get it done, we don't lose everything it's like they do in reality TV, you know, because their entire business plan is always hinging off the profit of one vehicle. Right. All the shims are the same. So we'll stick these on any old place. Okay, the wear indicator does need to go towards the bottom on the lower side, or on the leading edge, I guess it would be. Let's see, so that goes, this bracket goes like this. So we want this one here. be on our outside stick that in too because that's also like an anti-rattle hold spring tension out on it it's gonna be a little bit of a piss pot to get in there come on baby get her lined up ever so nicely it does have some tension on it because the wear indicator is also a spring 
that pushes out towards the abutment hardware. Make sure that's clicked down all the way. Same thing here. Oops. Gotta get it get in there just so. You just gotta be careful pushing. You don't wanna push it too far, but they should move freely. You can kind of hear it squawking on that spring. But they do move nice and free. So the wear indicator, like I say, has quite a bit of outward tension on it. So that's what you hear kind of creaking back and forth there. I guess that's it, folks. Slap that baby back on. I gave that a little blast of fluid film. Kind of keep it from getting so rusted. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work. Stick an axle nut on here to take up some space just to hold that for us. Take our loaded assembly here. Slip that baby right on there. Get the bolt started in it. Some days I hate Napa. That's the I hate Napa song. We sing it some days. It's a love hate we have. I'll snug this baby up to the correct FTLBSs. We're gonna let our caliper down here. We'll put a little bit of lube on it and slip that baby on. So we wanna blow the rust off of there. We're gonna lube any metal to metal contacts that's going to help alleviate any squealing so where the caliper here meets the pads we put a little grease on it and then we'll put a little bit of caliper grease on the piston faces here or you can just lube the back side of the pad either way put a little bit there like i say these pistons are going to rust out anyways by the next brake job so we'll go like this, slip it over there, we'll find our bolts and get them in there. Beautiful. Now it's just a matter of going for a rip. We're gonna take put the wheels back on obviously before we go drive it. Step two, we'll pump up the brakes so we don't go slinging out into the street. Check our brake fluid, make sure it's full. Kind of curious, you know, looking in service data, because down in the comments, every time you do a brake job, um, everybody chimes in saying, oh, you should open the bleeder, you should you know, close the bleeder, you should empty out the reservoir, you should flush the brakes, you should go jump off a bridge. You know, they give me all the advice they can. And I always look in service data just to kind of go along with them to see what service data says. And it's not too often you run across in service data where they tell you to open the bleeder before you push the pistons back in. Like rarely do you find it in service data. And same thing with Subaru. Subaru service data was very big. Uh, they don't even tell you to push the pistons in. <laughs> Remove the caliper body, replace the pads, put the caliper body back on. Here's your torque specs, have a nice day.
brakes versus new brakes, even brakes like this that aren't even set in. This pedal's quite sensitive. That's it folks, front brakes on your Forester. Uh, of course that's using the OEM stuff. Uh, not really much different than using you know, your aftermarket. So pretty much the same process. You just have to remember when you call to get them from the Subaru, make sure you get all the, all the different parts, the shims, abutment hardware, all that stuff. And uh, Subaru ordering their OEM parts can be kind of tricky because when uh, when you order the rear brakes for these from Subaru, they come with the shim kit, but when you order the front, they don't. I don't, I don't know. It's just kind of one of those weird things you keep in your noodle because you've gotten boned by Subaru. Just like you got boned by Napa. You just get ahead of yourself and you order stuff and you think it's going to be right and then whatever, dude. Um, that's it. The whole job went pretty smooth. Turned out good. The brake uh, effort is now minimal for the amount of stopping power output by the uh, Subaru. So that's it. Uh, how about you guys out? Put some comments into that comment section. Insty, Facebook, you guys know where to find us. While you're down there, subscribe. Make sure you ring the bell. I don't have to keep telling you, but I do. Just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.